Baseball, soccer, basketball, rugby. What do all these sports have in common? That's right. They're all sports where humans work together as a team. Humans know instinctively they can accomplish more by working together. But what about athletes who work solo? Sometimes working on your own can be worthwhile too. It's hard to know sometimes whether to be a team player or whether to study on your own. After all, athletes receive gold medals in both. But which is right for you? Today, we will find out who should win the Anatomy Olympic gold medal for best learning experience. Study groups or solo? Now, finding the winner is not easy, let me tell you. Both study groups and studying solo have their pros and cons. For example, study groups help you share workload, have detailed discussions, and clarify confusions. Whereas some people, up to 70% of students, according to some studies, hey. never used study groups or have mm. tried to, but then quit. Sometimes being a sole champion has its advantages. In this video, let's talk through some viewpoints to help you draw your own conclusions about whether you should study in a group or solo. Let's begin by scoring some goals for study group. There are quite a few advantages to studying in a group, so let's go through them one by one. First one, help with clarifying problems. Very often, students have way more questions that they can ask their lecturers and assistants. In a study group, you can clarify confusions, correct misunderstandings, and have intricate discussions about a certain topic. Are you uncertain about the trajectory of the facial nerve? Well, just mm -hmm. ask your group. Another advantage of studying with other people, you can teach and test each other. Many students know about the importance of active recall and that explaining the material and taking tests are two methods which use this principle. A study group gives you an audience ready to listen to you. In addition, you can create practice exams and ask each other questions to really pinpoint your misunderstandings. Another benefit of learning in a group shared workload. Instead of reading and learning about the anatomy of the heart alone, why don't you share the burden with the whole group and divide the workload? You can share notes and explain the concepts to each other. Social setting is another good thing about learning in a study group. The word social should definitely not be mixed with learning anatomy. But some students cannot isolate themselves in a quiet place and learn by themselves. So there you go, some points for team study group. Now that we've talked about the benefits of studying in a group, let's hit some balls in the solo study court. Avoid collaborative inhibition. If you study by yourself, you'll be required to learn everything on your own, in your own way. If you study in a group, however, a phenomenon known as collaborative inhibition may occur. This is when a group acts as a single entity, each member sharing what they know. And sometimes what each member knows might not be exactly what you need to learn. For example, your entire study group might collectively remember 10 branches of the maxillary artery, but once you're by yourself, you have better chances of learning that the maxillary artery actually has 17 branches. Studying by yourself, however, makes you more reliant on your own memory and ability, and avoid any interference that you get from a study group setting. But going solo, you can also avoid collaborative encoding deficit. This phenomenon negatively impacts encoding. This means that individuals who encode information collaboratively in a group as a whole recall less compared to members who encode individually. Essentially, you remember more branches of the maxillary artery if you learn them by yourself rather than with a group. The explanation for this is that individually generated items are more idiosyncratically meaningful to you and you alone compared to those of other group members. Yeah, your notes will be more meaningful to you than anything that is given to you by anyone in your study group. The next good thing about learning on your own is that you can be your own leader. 
Think about that last time you studied in a group. It probably felt like a parliamentary debate with every member talking simultaneously trying to get their point across and papers flying around everywhere. Studying on your own means you can direct your own learning as you please. Studying solo also means that there is no need to deal with group dynamics. More than likely, the members of your study groups will come in many flavors. Very often, the result is a haphazardly formed study environment where no one really benefits. Working on your own evades all this and helps you focus on your own studies. And last but not least, least, no distractions. This is perhaps the biggest benefit of studying solo. There is a high chance in your study group could turn into a social situation where the last thing everyone does is actually learning. Anatomy already takes a long time to master, so wasting time is the last thing you need. Well, well, I think that's a game set and match to studying solo. So after all that, who do you think should get the Anatomy Olympic gold for learning experience? Group study or solo? I think it really depends. Each student has individual needs and requirements and you should play around and see what works for you. Are you a student that hates learning alone and would rather discuss the material with others? Do you simply enjoy studying groups? Keep doing it then. After all, you need to enjoy learning the material. Like the peace and quiet that comes with studying alone? Go on, bring home the gold. But wait, if you want to share the gold, I think you've got a way to combine the strengths of both. Review groups. I know, what are review groups? I can hear you asking. Review groups are where individual members study solo and then come together in a group to revise test and teach each other. This is probably the best combination of both worlds, as it allows for the strengths of students studying on their own in a focused environment and then combining together to help each other consolidate their knowledge. And get this, you can even use CanHub to help you out with both aspects of this. When you're with your study group, each member can access their own individual accounts and browse through our atlas to explore every anatomical structure and read our complete articles to fact check any information you might be discussing. Every group member can register and create their own account for free at CanHub. Then, when you're by yourself, watch our fun videos that cover any topic in less than 30 minutes and test your knowledge with our interactive quizzes, which are available to premium members. That way, you can get the best of both worlds. Yes! Look under your seats, people! You get the gold! You get the gold! You get the gold! You all get the gold tonight! To learn more about study groups and learning solo, I will leave an article in the video description below that I highly recommend that you read. And don't forget to visit our main website, canhub.com, to check out the articles, quizzes, atlas, and videos that I mentioned before. Give this video a thumbs up to tell us that you want to see more of this type of content. And let us know in the comments how you go. Do you prefer to study solo or in a group? We'd really love to learn from you. And you get the gold, and you also get the gold, and you get the gold. Everyone gets the gold. <sighs> Adios, people. I'll see you next time.